All right, guys, we are now recording, and uh, we'll turn it over to Mr. Chad Conway for garden maintenance. But, uh, one, a couple of things I wanted to point out before we get uh, started with this tonight is um, on our Facebook page, we've got a successful gardening class up, and there is a short, it's pretty similar to what I went over with the Grow Appalachia, but there's a short survey if you'll hit the link. Uh, if you're looking for some corn seed, um, you can fill that link, fill out the survey, and um, and we'll put you in for uh, our gardening packet here at the office. Uh, we've got 25 or 30 of those left, so um, it is first come, first serve. So if you get a chance to fill those out and fill out that survey, and we can get you some honey select sweet corn seed if anybody's really looking for sweet corn seed. With that is some cucumber seeds and some volunteer half runners as well. So. Um, and that's on our not County Facebook page. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention tonight was uh, wildlife control. I'm not going to cover much wildlife tonight. Um, if we can fit that in later, uh, if Jason's got time, I'll try to try to share a PowerPoint presentation on that. <laughs> but I'm offering a class on May 18th. It'll be on uh, on Zoom as well, um, so you can sign up for that through the office here. And that will, will actually, um, you can sign up for that. It'll, it'll be um, uh, on wildlife control for gardeners. So, so that's on May 18th at 5.30. Work on my camera here in a second. Um, and then also, um, so we got that coming up, May 18th, wildlife control. But if, if you don't, you know, we put a lot of time into these gardens. People spend a lot of money, a lot of time. You folks, and there's nothing more disappointing than going out and having it all eaten by deer, by rabbits, by, <laughs> we see all kinds of pests and, and, and um, critters that, that tend to tear our gardens up. So if you, if you can afford to invest in electric fence, um, that's, that's one good investment that I would suggest. Um, you know, some of the boxes are relatively inexpensive. Make sure you, you don't get the cheapest box, but um, a mid-grade box would be fine. And, you know, a couple strands of electric will keep out a lot of animals, especially if you're putting down, one down low and uh, another one up. Deer, believe it or not, they, uh, I usually put some flagging tape on my electric fence wire. And believe it or not, once they get into that, all the deer seem to stay away from it. But it's really difficult once the deer find something they like in your garden, then try to control the deer. So um, so keep that in mind. It's, uh, it's a really good investment if you're going to garden for a while, even on a small scale. And um, you can use that box year after year, your fence, take it down each file, store it up, <laughs> use it the next year so. So, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll be teaching a class totally on wildlife control um, on May 18th. And like I said, if, if Jason can, uh, can fit us in for another class, I'll do a 20, 30 minute presentation for you guys too. Uh, let's see, one, a couple other things I don't want to forget is talking about soil samples. We still, still need folks to keep bringing those in. I've got several back that'll, that Jason will be handing out next week. Um, one thing that, that I have ran into is a lot of, yep. I'm out. If you, if you gave a soil sample and you pick it, when you come through the pickup, remind me, because that's the one thing that ends up in a folder on the table that I forget about. So remind me you have a soil sample and I will look for it and try to bring it to you. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I'll be, I'll have those ready next week. I've been working those up and got got all but a couple done, but um, that's that's been been submitted. One thing I've noticed is the the pH is is very low, uh, so so we've got a lot of alkaline soils, and they they're going to need a lot of lime to build those back up. Now, when if they need lime, I'll, I, I've even got one here that, that needs 250 pounds per thousand square foot. So. Uh, so that's a lot of lime. And, um, and of course we've talked about how we need that lime to, to get a balanced pH and to make our other fertilizers work well in our garden. So, uh, so if you need that, you're looking for an ag agriculture pellet lime. 
uh, the hydrated powder line does not work. It's a, it's a to totally different makeup. So, so you need to look for the agriculture pellet line. It, usually, um, a lot of your bigger box stores carry it, Lowe's, Tractor Supply, or a hardware store sometimes carry, carries it as well. So, uh, um, so you can pick it up. It's usually about a 40 pound bag runs about $4 uh, in, in, in on general, you know, it depends where you get it, but somewhere in that price range, 350 to 450 a bag. Uh, so I encourage you to get that on as soon as possible. Uh, it takes lime, uh, usually two to three months to work, uh, to begin working. So it's, it's important to get that on pretty early. And um, so, so keep that in mind. Any questions about soil testing, nutrient needs before I go in any further? Again, a, a lot of them, if they're pretty good, I'll, I'll talk about, I'll just say side dress your plants as needed uh, with the 343 fertilizer. And that fertilizer, you know, you can use quite a bit of that. Um, you know, a lot of people are used to the old time triple 10, 10, 10, 10 fertilizer. So, so you can use three times that amount to get to the, the 10, 10, 10 fertilizer. So, so you can use it pretty sparingly. I would recommend, um, you know, putting it all around your plants or along the row. Um, and then every couple weeks, uh, especially when they start producing blooms, putting on uh, fruit, because that's when our plants get stressed. And when our plants begin getting stressed, it's when we see disease problems. Uh, and that's that's one one thing we get concerned about. So so nutrients is, is key. And um and weed control is key. So we'll talk about that a little bit uh, tonight. Carry during the growing season, you know, we talk about, um, you know, water plants need, uh, we know they, they need water, sunlight, nutrients, rich soil. So uh, watering is, tends not to be an issue here. I think I talked about this before. We t we've had a lot of wet years the last five or six years have been really w wet with, with, with what many believe is climate change. And uh, so we're seeing a lot of, a lot of wet summers. And so I'm not too concerned about watering those. If we see two or three weeks of dry weather, like I've talked before, those roots of those plants will keep reaching further into the soil and try to find that, that water table. So um, if we water too much, the roots tend to stay on top of the ground. And, uh, and, and don't reach on down into the nutrient level that they need. So they become weaker plants actually. So, so not, too, um, not too much worry about water unless we see three to four weeks of really hot dry weather. Automated systems do work good, but if you're using a, if you're gonna water, you need to water for a, a long period of time. Uh, going out with the water hose, wet in the ground, uh, does more damage than good. It, it causes a lot of disease issues, puts a, a hard layer on top of your ground, um, compacts the soil. So, so I, I really encourage you not to, to water unless necessary. Weed control is key for maintenance of your plants, keeping them healthy. Um, if we have weed problems, it does several things. One, that weed is taking that nutrients away from that plant. And when we take nutrients away from the plant and, and that weed's taking up the nutrient needs, then that plant's gonna get stressed. And that's when we, we see a lot of disease problems begin and the plants get weak and, and they're hard to turn back around once we see that start happening. So, so keeping the weeds out, whether it be just going through with, um, with, with your hoe and keeping those knocked down, um, you know, pulling them up, whatever you have to do to keep, keep weeds under control. You, you do have a lot of options or, you know, plastic works well. Um, although it's not environmentally friendly, uh, but it, it does work well and it, and it uh, actually keeps your plants looking really good, uh, keeps some, your vegetables clean and um, it's used a lot today, but it is a headache to get rid of and, and, and dispose of in the fall. Um, another great one is straw. Uh, straw here on the left picture shows a, a nice bedding of straw around your, your plants, does a great job. Um, grass clippings do okay. Newspapers are great. Cardboard's great. Um, 
I would stay away from hay. Hay will cause a lot of weed problems and hay also will cause a lot of insect problems uh, and slug problems. So, so, so I would definitely stay away from hay. Make sure if you're getting, you know, make sure you purchase clean straw if you're going to use straw. Um, leaves still okay if you got them or, or some mulch or something they're okay I, I get a little concerned about a lot of hardwood it can increase your pH but uh, especially around um, uh, we get concerned with that around beans and things but uh, but anything to help control weeds is any kind of type of barrier that you can use is very helpful newspapers cardboard work out great too and we all have a lot of that laying around Fertilizer, like I said, is pretty key, and, and, and the 343 uh, fertilizer uh, is what you'll be getting. Uh, it works well. Uh, it's really tough to get enough, and this is another thing that I think um, Jason kind of backed off the corn is, is with 343 fertilizer that they recommend, you really have to use a lot of it um, to, for, for corn. And uh, as far as beans, they make their own nitrogen, so they don't need as much uh, uh, fertilizer. So, so a lot of your crops, everything else should do fine with the 343 fertilizer. Pest management. Um, it's the key here that I'm going to really try to drive home to you guys is spraying early. Um, once a disease hits, and it, just think of it like us. Uh, once a disease hits our body, then it's hard to control. But if we take care of our bodies and maybe compare it to like taking vitamins, um, if we do that and keep our bodies healthy and get the right nutrients that we need, then then we can can keep a lot of disease problems out. So so I encourage folks to use the organic sprays as much as possible. They do a great job. They're really safe products, and uh, and I, we'll talk about a few of those here in a minute. Um, but when we talk about pest control, that's something that you really need to scout for um, in your gardens. You know, look for holes in your plants. Sometimes it's caused by disease problems. You'll think, oh man, I've got insect problems, but actually, we'll see some some blights and things and um, viruses that hit that hit your um, crops that that'll cause holes as well but most of the time look for insects look up under the leaves uh need to start that kind of early um because we we see some of these um, um boars that come into our squash boars and things that come into our, our cucurbits like cucumbers pumpkins um different squashes those those tend to hit pretty early and uh, they can devastate your crop pretty quick. So, so I would probably recommend getting a, a spray schedule, keeping good records of when you spray, that way you know when to re-enter and respray, um, even with insecticide. And it, like I said, it's a, what you'll be getting is the uh, chemical called spinosis, which is a, spinosis is a uh, organic um, drive Made, made from plants. I'm not sure which plant it comes from, but it's really a, a great product. That's pretty much all I use anymore on our farm. Uh, it's, it's really working well for us right now. Um, so, so just get out and scout for the bugs, look for the bugs. Whenever you see bugs, if you want to send a picture or something, um, you know, feel free to, to drop me an email, send it to Jason. Um, you can text it to me as well. Um, most of you guys have probably got my cell phone number. If not, Jason can get it for you and send me a picture of any bugs that, 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 that may be a concern to you that you see in your garden. Uh, not all pests are bad. And that's something that's very key to folks to understand. Um, some of the pests, um, pretty much are, uh, work on other, against other pests that may cause problems and, and, uh, so there's some some ones out there that really are beneficial to our gardens and we want to not overuse chemicals and, and cause an issue with that as well. When using chemicals, I always follow, follow the label directions. Uh, a lot of folks call me, they'll say, well, how do I mix this? Well, I'll pull up the label uh, on the internet 
and and try to give them the, the recommendations off of that because there's different percentages and different uh, trade names and and they have different uh, sometimes different makeups. So always read your label and, and go by what the label says on your your bottle. Here's a, a list. You, you do have some other options when it comes to in, insect problems. Um, you know, what you'll be getting that Captain Jack's dead bug spray is, is organic. It does a good job overall, um, but there is a few that it doesn't work on. Um, so, so there's some other approaches. One is insecticidal soaps are great. Horticulture oils are, are great, but uh, a lot of folks use insecticidal soap. They make their own uh, pretty easy with uh, uh, dishwashing um, liquid like Dawn or something. And, and there's uh, some recipes out there that, that can be made to, to use those instead of any other chemicals for certain, for certain things. Um, some things they won't work on at all. Remember that organic breaks down much faster in the environment than, uh, than some of your traditional uh, chemicals that, that are used on some of the, that you can pick up at some stores. So, so keep in mind, try to use organic whenever possible. Uh, this slide here is just showing a couple of trade names. We don't endorse anything here at the University of Kentucky, but I did want to make make uh, show y'all some photos of what's available to you. Copper fungicide is one of my favorites. Uh, it comes in a lot of different trade names. Um, copper fungicide is for disease control. And like I said, we want to make sure we start using that pretty early um, and and make sure that, um, that we use it as recommended every couple of weeks, whatever it may say, seven to 10 days. I'm not sure what's what's on the label of this copper fungicide, but um, it's really good for disease control. Um, sulfur is another product that's that's organic, that, that's been really good for folks that um, that raise beans, that's had some issues with some, some uh, blights on their beans. So I've been recommending that and they, they've had good luck with it as well. And sulfur is used on several different crops. Um, it usually comes, I wish I had a picture of it, but um, uh, sulfur usually comes as a powder uh, and you, you mix it as well in your sprayer. Um, speaking of sprayers, make sure that you use, have a sprayer just for your garden. We don't wanna be using uh, sprayers that may have Roundup or, or some kind of lawn chemical in it, weed killer in it of some type. And, um, or even if you use a sprayer around your house to, to kill insects um, around your windows or doors or something, uh, I would suggest getting your own sprayer just for your garden. They're like $20, uh, very good investment. Uh, we gave those out a few years ago, but, uh, but yeah, so, so it's a good investment to have a new, just a sprayer to use in your garden. Um, the other two labels here, um, are our spinosad products. Uh, one is Monterey Garden Insect Spray. We've gave that out in the past and I think this year Jason went with the Captain Jack's dead bug uh, brew. So uh, so those are some that that are really uh, work well in the organic world. This one this goes into harvesting probably um, could talk about this just a little bit. Um, you, you know, most of you folks have raised things and um, and, and all of it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, watermelons, I will mention while we're on this page, you're looking for, it's hard to tell when a watermelon's ripe. Uh, look for the underside to be yellow. A lot of times it'll have some some um, spider looking veins that show up in a, in a ripe watermelon. And then uh, the end of the stem usually will turn kind of brown and start to twirl uh, the stem of the watermelon when it's ripe. And, and they'll have a dull thump, which most of y'all thump watermelons in the grocery stores. So I'm familiar with that. Uh, so any uh, anything else that you may not know, I think most of you all pretty familiar with it when to, to harvest things. And um, 
our home gardening publication has some good resources in it as well. Storing vegetables. Uh, while I'm on this slide, I'll talk about that too. Um, you know, a lot of them need refrigerated. Uh, try not to store them in plastic um, unless it's got slits in it or something. Um, but you know, you can keep them fresh for a few days, but if we're looking at keeping things out two, three to four days, uh, it's time to start getting in, in the refrigerator. So, um, so produce does not, vegetables do not stick around too long unless they're, they're processed pretty quick. And uh, that's, that's why they're so high in the grocery store. There's just so much waste that uh, in produce, that's, that's unbelievable. Uh, pretty much all I had tonight on maintenance. I kept it pretty short, easy for you all to um, to think about, and um, don't want to put too much in your in your minds to to overcrowd. But weed control is key, um, nutrients key, your spray schedule is very important, and scouting for those insects are very important as well because it doesn't take long for disease and insects to cause major problems. Uh, just think of it as, you know, when a disease starts, we know how it spreads. It can spread really fast. Uh, we just think of what we deal with for the last year with COVID, how it can spread so fast. And it can do it a lot faster in our vegetable crops. So, so uh, I would encourage you all to, to, to get a sprayer, use uh, some of the organic chemicals and, and uh, get on a pretty good spray schedule and keep good records. Jason, that's really all I had tonight. I wanted to keep it short. I, anything that I didn't cover, I'll be glad to, to um, maybe take some questions on or anything you think about, Jason. I need. I think we're good. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, you can pop it in the chat box or unmute yourself and ask. Uh, either chat or myself. Um, it is certainly that time of year. Um, you know, everything is, uh, you know, we, we're still a little early to plant some things, but it, we are, we're itching uh, and we'll get there. Uh, I will throw this out there. If anybody wants to uh, sell at the Knott County Farmer's Market, please get up with myself. Uh, we have some forms that's got to be filled out by the end of the month and a, a short training that I can do one-on-one -on -one with you uh, to get you uh, uh, able to take SNAP, WIC, and Senior Farmer's Market vouchers. So if you decide you would like to sell or think you might want to sell um come and come and uh, and, and sign up and that way if, if something happens and you got a big bumper crop of something you can come to the market and sell it uh our market has been doing exceptionally well uh we're uh last year we hit a little over twenty two thousand dollars in total sales so uh Bordis needs plowed i will get uh, i will I will add Bordas to the plow list, Judy. I haven't talked to Bordas, but he's he's on my list to call. So, um, anybody else got any questions? Jason, you did mention something very important. Um, you know, our cold crops are perfect right now to go ahead and get those in the ground. Uh, I, I, we're safe on beans. Um, but uh, the temperature for corn is, is still a little bit cool, the ground temperature. And, um, you know, tr please wait on those transplants, um, your peppers and tomatoes. Wait until at least after Mother's Day because we see the, the cold ground stresses those plants out. Uh, they're used to warmer temperatures. So, so if we put those out now, we're just causing ourselves more grief later on, you know. I've seen it happen. I've done it myself. I, I want us to get started early, but uh, but usually I end up throwing those plants away, having to pull them up, and, and they just don't perform good all year long. So just put it off until, until after Mother's Day to put out those those yep. transplants. Yeah, yeah and uh, you know we'll be giving we'll be giving those plants out the third and the fourth. Uh, keep just keep them watered in the tray. Put them out the next week or after that because it, it's not uncommon for us to have a mid-May frost uh and I, you know I really I'm a I'm a even a little leery about getting beans planted in the ground for because of that May frost and last year we had that you know we had a frost on like Memorial Day last year that was was pretty crazy um 
but you know, after that that second full week of May, it's you, it's it's pretty safe. But uh, um, if y'all don't have any more questions, bye. Arnold's on a list last time, but Morris wasn't home. Nathan did great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Yeah, we're tickled. Nathan's doing a really good job. It's hard to, it's hard to replace Bobby, and we've not talked about a lot about Bobby, and for those of y'all that's been in, know that Bobby was our longtime Grow App technical assistant uh, and uh, teller of tales and, and garden guru, and we certainly uh, uh, we certainly uh, uh, miss him, but he passed away uh, right around Christmas last, last year, so uh, – uh, Nathan is doing it and doing a wonderful job. Lenny, uh, there'll be a there'll be an email to get uh, transplants, not corn. We're not going to give out corn this year, um, but uh, uh, there'll be an email for transplants. Lenny, I don't know who my deal is. Did you All right. If anybody else has got any other questions. Well, guys, if not, we will see you Monday and Tuesday. I will send a, a, an email out to everybody uh, and a remind. If, you've, if you're if you signed up to get a text reminder, you'll get that. But Monday the 19th uh, from 4 to 6, we'll be passing things out here in Hindman. And uh, on Tuesday – from four to six uh, over at the Cornetsville Park in Perry County. So uh, we'll see you then. And if anything comes up between now and then, always send us a message or uh, give us a call. We'll be glad to help you out. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Hey, Emily. I miss all of you guys. I miss you, Emily. I can't, I can't wait till we meet again in August in person. So. Until August? Good. Good. Yes. Yep. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.